So we basically left off at modeling the straps of the mask. And one thing I actually noticed, which is kind of interesting is in the concept, we see that the mask has this rounded corner over here going into the body, which totally makes sense because otherwise it's kind of clipping into the chest. So this is something that's actually worthwhile to fix. So I would have to push this further to the front. You can just select these individual points, kind of make this slightly rounded shape over here. This might be actually good to enable the subdivision surface modifier. Because this sort of shape can definitely look pretty weird. Let's just keep adjusting it a little bit. Yes. Actually going to add a little bit more distance here. There we go. Should be good. You can push this also a bit forward. We're gonna, I'm gonna clean up the shapes later on a little bit, so I can leave it a bit more rough for now. There's all of these weird pinching surfaces going on and that sort of stuff. But the main elements that are currently still missing are definitely the face and the hair. Uh, also another little adjustment I definitely want to make right now is that the belt is actually also a strap for the backpack. So I can just delete these parts over here and this should definitely lead directly into the backpack. So we can just extrude it. Ah, interesting. Along the Y axis. Yes, like that. Oh, I forgot that I actually manually extruded this depth. So I can just enable X-ray shading, push this further back. Okay, the next element that's missing is definitely the face. I'm just gonna add this via, via curves for now. Oops. we go. Adding another one over here. And then a last one for the mouth. Actually, it might be better for the curves on the mouth to be more aligned with the center of the lips because we are going to use them to add some thickness to it later on. Eh, good enough. <laughs> can rotate them slightly to align them with the surface of the mask. Oh, 
Okay, so one of these curves can be a 2D curve that, that we can just fill in. Yeah, same one on the other ones. There we go. <laughs> and then we can just duplicate the curve, turn it into a 3D one, and add a bit of depth to it. Make it a full circle. Same thing for this one. It's all right now pretty crude, but that's fine. This is just to get all the basic elements in here that we need. And the lips, of course, need a lot more depth. <laughs> yeah, we can adjust the resolution over here. This is for preview and render is zero, which I'm guessing it's just going to be, yeah, it's just going to be the same as the preview preview resolution. And then uh, smooth actually does nothing. Okay. You can just keep this right now as it is. But these elements would definitely work very differently later on, just completely sliding across the surfaces. What we maybe can do is add a, yeah, a shrink wrap modifier to the mask and then set it to, uh, uh, yes, either near a surface point or tan uh, target normal project. And then select all the other curves, control L, uh, actually control C, and then copy modifiers. I actually, did I accidentally select the head? Yes, I did. Hmm. And because this is essentially just a tr bunch of triangles, it gets awfully stretched now. Copy modifiers. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah, I would apply the modifier on the 3D curves. Over here again, same thing. Ah. Apply. And unhide. There we go. And the reason why these curves basically unflatten is because the thickness is something that's added later on on top. That's still something that can be defined over here. This is live. And if we apply the modifier, it just applies it to the curve that we have in edit mode. 
Okay. Nope. Maybe with this thing it would be nice if I can make some of the edges sharp. I mean, actually it doesn't really matter because we're never going to see this object. But at this origin point now, we can just start adding the hair. I'm just going to actually going to model it from a cylinder, but not with this many points. So let's just go for 16. I can really recommend to make it an even number. I already messed up a little bit with the arms because I didn't rotate them in a way that the flat, that one of the flat uh, edge loops over here is aligned with the side view instead of made it with the, with the edge over here, which kind of caused the the foot to be a bit misaligned, but that's fine. We can always clean up the object later on. Now, we can scale this up. What I want to do is I'm going to use the the extrude to cursor tool. And now I can just click anywhere and it would, will just extrude and align the loops immediately. That's it. And we can do the same thing for the hair over here. Just keep Extruding till we get to this point. And here we just merge it to th uh, merge it to center. Scale these loops down. And this is just going to be the base underlying shape of the hair. It's going to be all these hair strands on top, but we can just add them as separate objects. There we go. Now I can scale this. Hmm. Okay, there's definitely going to be some asymmetry in the hair if I pull up the concept art again. From the side, it looks just like the single spike that's just going backwards. But from the front and back view, it's definitely visible. That it's kind of curving around his left shoulder. So that's something I could already put into the model. So we can see it over here. Oh, wow. I'm actually going to, as a starting point, okay, let's unselect these, this entire section. So we just have these, these loops over here in the back. And then let's just like slightly from the top and the back with shift W it's going to bend in a 180 degrees radius along the 3D cursor. So we can just do, yeah, do kind of this and select this guy, set the 3D cursor over here as a pivot point. And it's already way closer to what we want. So we already have that bent over here immediately. I think I might just go over to sculpt mode, uh, apply scale, definitely, always. 
and then I can just enable grab active vertex. Interesting. I did update the Blender version, so apparently the overlay is now gone. That's fine. So I can just grab all of this, pull it further to the side. Actually, let's undo a couple steps. Because I definitely want to pull this also from the front. There we go. Let's actually change the fall off to project. So it's just going to infinitely, infinitely project the brush stroke into the depth where we're looking at. There we go. Okay, didn't even really think about it that the hair would basically completely overlap the top part of the backpack. That's interesting. Uh, yes, fall off sphere. What you can also do as a little tip is if you are going to switch between these often, can just bring up the sidebar. Right now we only have one brush in this in the grab tool. We can create another one. Call this grab project or actually grab 2D. So now we have two different brushes over here and we can set one to use project and the other one to just be the same as usual. And now if you hit G multiple times I'm just going to switch between these two brushes. Very handy. The hair has a lot of volume. Definitely also keep rotating around the model. I'm going to try to add a... Oh, of course, that's why the overlay didn't appear. They, it only appears when you have actually modifiers on top. Because it's going to make sure that you can see the lowest resolution. That makes sense. Hmm. Just going to use the knife tool. Actually, let's just with the rip region, I can enable fill and then just click and drag and it's going to add another loop over here. I can hit G again, so it's going to go to edge slide and I can just slide it over here at the very tip. There's many different ways of like adding another loop right next to this triangle fan because control R is not going to work because it's just, it's a triangle fan. There's no way you can add an extra loop that way. So yeah, just V, fill, hit G, slide it in. That's it. Now we definitely keep this little pointy edge over here. There we go. Adding a bit of Volume back on the top. Oh, is X mirror enabled? So weird. Ah, here we go. Already working much better. But yes, this definitely needs to be way more volume on the side. which might not be that easy because we don't ha want to have it fully clip into the mask. So yes, I might act add an extra loop over here. Let's just disable the modify for edit mode. Scale this one up and this one 
down and then add another loop over here as well and scale this one up now we can still spread them out on the top of the head but I really want to fill in this area over here so there's never even the chance of seeing any anything of the head it's just completely capping off at the mask Still smooth a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I am actually thinking if I should just model the hair straight. It might definitely be harder to hit that very shape that we see in the concept. But it will definitely give some more freedom. with basically getting any shape you want. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. Um, I think I can actually... Yeah. There's a certain amount that you can go back in the undo steps. So I think I'm gonna just get rid of this and try again uh, yeah go back to wireframe mode Actually, this was already good. Okay, and we can see from the front and the back that the hair is super wide. So that's still something that should be in the model of the hair, even if it's straight. We can also enable X symmetry if we want to keep it symmetrical anyway. And we can actually add the subdivision surface modifier back. You can use the inflate brush to make this shape a bit more rounded. Also smooth it out a bit. And then again, over here, add this extra loop. Actually, maybe a couple more, just so it uh, gets sharper a bit more gradually. 
So. Same thing over here. Huh, okay, something got undone over here. Grab 2D, project, ah, let's, let's save. actually add a mirror modifier but instead of deleting one side I'm gonna keep it and set it to bisect this way it's just going to delete one side of it automatically and replace it with the other you can still keep keep uh, clipping on that way it's always going to snap the middle fa uh, the middle geometry And now with bisect on in the mirror modifier, we can pretty much without worry also sculpt on it. And it's going to just keep it symmetrical automatically. So we don't even need the symmetry. Oh, of course, it's this side. But it can still be very helpful to just keep it active. There we go. Yeah, some of the the vertices and edges might still escape the middle axis, so that's something to look to look out for. So these are essentially all the major shapes, all the things we need. As things in the, like, when we see it from orthographic, it probably aligns way more with the concept, but then if we go into perspective, for example, the hair on the top just disappears. Or almost disappears. So if we want to make that more visible, we would have to add more volume here at the front. Which actually fits very well, because we want to have the hair really fill in this space. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna add way more volume on the hair. And I am going to straighten the hair even more. I can just select this entire thing. And just again with the bent tool, straighten it slightly. That should be good. Um, I'm actually going to make another temp collection over here. I'm going to duplicate this for later. Maybe it will become useful to keep the original shape. I'm gonna exclude it. Also the little helpers over here. And with this guy, let's just bring this back to the center axis. Same thing over here. Uh, 
uh, just apply the modifiers so we have a little bit more control over the shape. And enable X symmetry. I actually added a shortcut specifically for X symmetry, which is control X, because just because I use it all the time. So, but if you have it visible over here on the top, it's also very useful. I might actually switch over to this secondary workspace I have. So oh, we have these straps over here and they should definitely be moving a bit further back into the hair. And at some point they are going to make a turn. So we can just extrude them along the x-axis over here, scale them down along multiple axes there we go Yeah, I might just flatten this, loop tools, and flatten. Yes. Same thing over here. Yes, it's much better. Let's push this up a bit more. We can actually orientate it from the side. Set the 3D cursor over here. Select these edges and then rotate it. There we go. So we have the slanted edge over here. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely reaching further into the hair than in the concept. So we can just pull this in a little bit more on the y-axis, scale it up again, and now we these might not be flat anymore, so we can just flatten them again. There we go. Yes, much better. So, in the concept, there are definitely two sets of volumes. Oh, oh! now that we subdivided this, this is no longer a triangle fan. But 
I might actually just... Uh, no, I can't triangulate it anymore. Yes, so this is going to cause a lot of issues over here. If we want to loop select anything, I actually kind of like this as a little stopper. So we can just extrude it and have this little triangle fan there again. And of course, wait, aha, uh -huh. this was actually filled. That was not intentional. We can just get rid of it. And now it's much easier to select these over here. Hide them, select the bottom part, but there's still a little connection over here. Of course. Like this, hide this as well. Hide the rest with L. There we go. You can disconnect the selection. Hmm. Bless you. Okay, I might actually take another route. Let's actually sculpt in the rest. If I remesh this, it won't work because it isn't a volume anymore, of course. Let's just fill in the rest with Alt F. Now if we remesh this, Control R, it's not a lot of resolution. Yeah. This is more like I, what I had in mind. We can use the mesh filter with smooth. Just click and drag. Smooth the surface. There we go. I'm actually gonna use the crease tool. Hmm. So it's definitely pretty interesting. So we want to have this lower shape of the hair. Actually, can I? Interesting. Yeah, like in the concept, this lower shape of the hair should kind of ideally already connect to the body. We can still see the head over here, but for that, would have the body. Let's scale it up along the x-axis.
So this is just to fill in the rest of the shape over here. We can just hide the backpack for now. So we have this sort of gradual incline of thickness towards the side. And then eventually, hmm. yeah, this is definitely the most tricky part of it. Because we have this head over here that we never want to see. Yet it's hard to get around with it over here with the hair. What we can definitely do is add a bit more volume over here. We can just quickly add this in front. This is just another custom menu I have. Essentially what I'm just toggling over here is in the object visibility in front. So it's always visible in front. You just add a bit of sharpness over here, just as like a little temporary planar shape. I'm also just regularly resetting the brushes right now because I uh, because the brush has really changed recently, and I didn't do it yet. There we go. Yes, and this line definitely goes further up. Huh. Yeah, so we have this line over here. Oh, interesting. It actually doesn't go that far up. Well, but it's also because the hair is way more curved in the concept. So this would be a bit more straight, going straight towards the tip over here. Hmm. Gonna remesh again. still have like another custom brush over here. I, I think I'm actually gonna get rid of it. So with, um, oh wow. We, by shift clicking on the X, it will remove all users. So this little two over here, it's just going to get imme go immediately to zero, which means if we go into the, uh, into file, and clean up and say purge all. Uh, yes. It's just trying to get rid of any data blocks that are not being used right now, including any unused brushes. So. The hair is definitely going to be a bit more of a complicated part. But we can just leave it like this for now. That would be like... Off. Oh, I think the smooth brush is a bit too extreme right now. But yes, there would be a bit of overlap over here. Where the hair is kind of 
tunneling into the mask. And then don't forget the backpack, of course. All right, with this, we at least have all of the major shapes blocked out. Any limbs, any elements that we need, it's all roughly in place. So now it's really about detailing the overall shapes, putting everything in there that we need in the 3D design.